I am a giant, aloft here in my tower. With my granite jaws I devour the grain, the corn and the rye. I turn them into flour. Do you know what I'm talking about? What I'm talking about is an archaeological device that's been a centerpiece in households since 12,000 BC. The quern. While today we concern ourselves with cars, holidays and our houses, in prehistory dating back to 12,000 BC, these were an essential part of survival in every household across the world. This saddle quern. If you look carefully at the design of this stone, the perfect oval in the centre stands testimony to the thousands of years that a smooth oval stone was rubbed in a circular motion, killing grains, bringing corn to the end of one life, but alchemically producing something of far more value and nutritious substance that's going to keep your family alive. If you look closely at the shape of this, we can see how it was actually used. Here on this side, it's rough. It's never seen repetitive friction. But on this side here, it's completely smooth, which suggests somebody was sitting like this for a long, long time. Now, with this round circular motion, there's got to be some way for the crushed grains and the pulp meal to come out of this into a container to be turned into bread. So look closer at this oval shape in the centre. It isn't perfectly oval. Here you can see it's been smoothed. And all around here it's still rough and you can see the chisel marks on how they flatten this to begin with. What this suggests is that with the predominant amount of people having right hands, the stone in the centre was turned like this, with the grain being pulled out here. And this is why it's smoothed, and this is rough. So we can see the functional, operational aspects of this stone by looking at the irregularity in the geometry. On another level, the alchemical production of lead into gold, of grain into flour, was also symbolised sexually, whereby this represented the female, and the grinding stone with its repetitive circular motion represented the male. And the symbiosis of the male and the female aspects of the stone produced the new life. And coming from the land to the sky, on an astronomical level, in both ancient Arab and Norse cultures, the circular quernstone represented the tundra of the star spinning every night, and the fixed circular centre represented the fixed celestial poles, either north or south, around which the stars and the planets were seen circling. So this is both truly alchemical when relating to fertility on Earth, and astronomical when symbolic of the universal cycles of the stars, the planets, and our moon. And used practically for ancient astronomy, while you can't actually look directly at the sun in the sky, and while it's hard to monitor the motions of the moon, for there's nothing to measure it against, while looking into the reflective properties of a quernstone. If you were to create marks around the edge and look at the reflection of the moon, you can monitor and count how long it takes for the moon to pass one or two of these measured distances. And that would enable not only a calculation of distance, but also of time. The quernstone becomes an ancient astronomical chronometer, a shaman's clock. In the 18th and 19th centuries, these were adopted by witches who would find them lying at abandoned crofts. They filled them with water and used them as devices for scrying. 
where they would gaze and meditate into the the reflections on the inner oval to make um, predictions on the future weather patterns that would affect the grain that went into these granite jaws. On the west coast of Scotland, these were very often carved with crosses by 19th century churchmen in a bid to try and depower the evil associations with these devices. In every sense, this is an alchemical bowl, a proto-witch's cauldron, representing gender and womanhood. When full, harvest and plenty, but when seen empty, dissolution and destruction. That's all, folks. So until next week, I'll leave you with a little poem. <clears throat> As above, so below, the quern was fill, the corn did grow. We danced the fields, we wore our wellies, we ate their bread, we filled our bellies.